Hi, this is Professor Mark Barkey at the University of Alabama, and I'm recording this video as an introduction to AEM 250 Distance Education section for Fall 2020. Now, to access this course, you will go into MyBama, and for me, I click on a Faculty tab. Now, for you, maybe there's a Student tab. And I go to the Blackboard Learn section for the class. And it takes a, a moment or two, but these will populate. And so these are the different classes that I'm responsible for this semester. And then to enter the course, I click on AEM 250-920. I have that in a different tab already called up. So we'll take a look at that here um, in this window. All right. And so here is our course homepage for Mechanics and Materials. Now. Um, this class is called AEM 250, Aerospace Engineering and Mechanics. This is not an aerospace engineering course, however. This course is a mechanics course. So Aerospace Engineering Mechanics does aerospace engineering and it does mechanics. Mechanics is the study of how structures and materials respond to loads and forces. And so that provides you the background if you're a mechanical, civil, um, aerospace engineering, materials engineering student provides you the background with this course for the later courses you'll take in engineering design in your specific discipline. Okay, so this is the student view. This is what you should see. There are a few important links over here on the left hand side. Now try to gather these all uh, kind of together for the most important ones. And so this is the course homepage. This will take you back here. The syllabus will take us to the uh, web link for the syllabus for this class. Okay, and in here has the required text and talks about some different information, a lot of which we'll see here in the video in just a moment. Talks about assessments, assignments, and exams. Our grading policy, homework 5%. Regular exams, there's going to be three. Total is 60%. Final exam, 35%. Talks about the grade ranges and so forth. Uh, use of tutoring sites, don't use them. Uh, things like Chegg.com are strictly prohibited for this class. And uh, various different things about uh, what we have going on this semester in our syllabus. There's certain statements that the university has and if you need any of these accommodations and so forth, uh, you should contact me right away, uh, particularly if there are any disability accommodations that need to be made. All right, so let's see. If I click back on this tab, um, so that's the course syllabus. The course schedule, if you click on this uh, right now, as I'm showing in this video, this will take you to an old schedule. I'm going to email out the new schedule, and as soon as I can, I'm going to get the file replaced in this course schedule link. It should be just a few days from now. Uh, you may see it if you visit this early in the semester. You may see the old file. So I'm going to email the new file out to you, and this is what it will look like. I'll zoom in on it here. And so uh, basically this is a Monday, Wednesday, Friday type class. Okay, I know these are pre-recorded lectures. Uh, you don't have to watch the video on Wednesday. You don't have to watch the video on Friday. However, we will have an exam on the dates that are listed in this schedule. Okay, so this is the day, the date, the topics, and then the recommended problems. And I'm going to get into more detail about the recommended problems later. Basically, there are two types of problems. Uh, recommended problems and problems that you will turn in for a homework grade. If you do not work the recommended problems, or maybe even more than the recommended problems, you're not going to be in very good shape for the exams. So it's very important that everybody understands that in order to do well in the class, you're going to have to go beyond the required homework and do the recommended problems. All right, so uh, our first exam will be on 916. We'll talk about the format of that very soon. The second exam is on 1014. And the third exam is on 1118. And then our final exam, I'm going to send you an email out. Uh, basically, it's going to be Wednesday uh, night of final exam week. And I'll send out an email with those details soon. 
Now, because of COVID-19 and all the disruptions that everything is having because of, uh, of that situation of the pandemic, you will not be required to have a proctor for your exam. You will take your exam on your own. I'm going to trust that you abide by the rules and regulations and requirements of the uh, testing protocol that I will set. Basically, I'm going to give you your exam. You're going to have 90 minutes to work it and then a few extra minutes to be able to scan it and send it back to me as a PDF document. I will grade that PDF document. I have a list of things for the exam that are requirements. Basically, it's going to be closed book, closed notes. You are to work the examination on your own, completely on your own. No help from Chegg.com, no help from uh, anybody uh, text messaging anybody or anything else like that. You're going to work these exam problems on your own. You're going to be on your honor system. If I detect any inconsistencies or irregularities, I will turn the exams into our academic misconduct monitor and we will investigate what happened during that exam. Um, okay, so I, I do want to emphasize that you will not have to have a proctor, but you will be expected to follow the exam requirements. Okay, so these are the, the different topics and days for our course schedule. There are a couple things that talk about handouts and I'll show you where those are at uh, as well. And I highly, highly recommend that you work every one of these problems, maybe even more than these out of our textbook. Uh, go beyond what's required to be turned in. Okay. So in the past, I've taught this class where students have had to turn in homework every single day. That can be kind of stressful, particularly for distance education students. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a, a limited number of turned in assignments. And um, uh, you're going to work these problems when it's convenient for you, but before you take these tests. All right, so let's put this to the side. key to this idea of you working these problems on your own is you need to know whether or not you've done the problems correctly or not. There's where this link comes in. We'll click on it. This takes us to something called Panopto and right here it's currently recording. This is where this recording will sit right here in this folder but in addition to this video that will sit here I have a lot of pre-recorded content for the course. Let's go through each of these folders and we'll take a look. So if we click on this one, I go through in great detail about what to expect on each exam. I also have some written documentation about what to exact, uh, expect as well. Uh, part of what you're going to be expected to do in this class is to be having a good understanding of statics, working structures with one, two, and three two force members. That term should be familiar with you from statics. If you have not had statics, you shouldn't be in this class. In fact, you need to have a C- minus or better in statics to be in AEM 250. Uh, well, there are examples here in video form where I go through and solve examples of a one, two, and three two force member structure. So that's a good place to look. Let's see if I can go up a folder. There are lectures embedded in the Blackboard shell for this class. You can access those. And I can't remember if it's lecture set one or lecture set two that are the embedded videos. Sometimes a video is blurry. What you might do is you might look in here and you might uh, re-watch it in this format, maybe this one won't be blurry. Okay. Now if you notice, um, these lectures are numbered. Panopto kind of likes to do what it likes to do to sort these. So if you click on uh, maybe 50 and you go by name, and then here you can see lecture 1, 2, and now it's in kind of a, an appropriate order. There is an additional lecture, sh lecture set, a second set of videos that I've recorded. It's the same content. It's just um, uh, a different way of saying the same things. You may find 
that useful as well. I may have done a few different example problems and so forth, but it goes through and these are another completely separate set of similar lectures for the course. Oh, here's the big one. AEM 250 worked out problems. All right, so you've seen from here that I really want you to work all these problems. In order for you to know that you've worked them out correctly, I've made videos for pretty much every single problem. And we'll talk about what happens if there's not a video. So for example, let's sort these by name. Going down this way, let's see, let's try this way. Okay, here's something that's kind of funny about this computer system. Numbers that start with 1, even though it's 10, come before numbers that start with 2. So 10 comes before 2 because it starts with a number 1. Alright, so when you look at these videos, if you go through here and you find uh, chapter 2, 3, 4, and so forth, don't forget that if you want to find chapter 10, you go back up to the top, and then chapter 12 is right below that. Okay, so here's a video for problem 2.2-1. 2.2- okay, here's 11. Okay, 11 comes after 1, but if you want 2.2-2, it's down here. So find the problem that you want to check your answer for, and I have uh, videos. If you click on that, maybe we can see a little bit of it. I have videos that go through and walk through every single step for any particular problem that we have. And now I suppose you could just stream all the way to the end and look at the final slide with the answer on it. That's not the point of how to use these videos. Try the problem on your own first. Use the videos to help you get unstuck if you happen to get stuck. And then send me an email or use our discussion board if you have problems or questions about any particular point in the in the question. Okay. All right, so this is going to be a big deal uh, for this class. Something I've worked uh, several years to develop is this folder of worked out video solutions. Okay, so what happens now if um, I've assigned to you problem 2.2-15 and I've worked 14 and 17, but you don't see a video on 2.2-15. Well, send me an email and say, hey, would you please work problem 2.2-15? And I will work problem 2.2-15 and make a new video. That new video, so that you can find it easily, let me back up here. will go in this folder called New Worked Out Problems. If I click on that right now, there's nothing in there because nobody's asked me to work a video out yet this semester. But as people do ask me, I'll put in here. So check two places when you go to look for worked out homework problems. You're going to look in this one and you're going to work in this one. Now the names of these folders might change slightly. I might put my name in them or something like that. but. Um, uh, be aware that the basic structure of these folder sets will be the same. Okay, so this is a big part of this course, is being able to view these worked out homework problems. I think it'll be a big help to you if you use them in the right way. Okay, so there is no need at all for you to try to buy a solution manual for this book, for you to use Chegg.com or any other outside service. Save your money ask me the questions and I will let you know the best way to work the problem. Um, I have a lot of experience teaching this class. All right. So uh, grades, this will go to your uh, grade panel. Okay. Um, discussion board, this is going to be another important part for this class. In this discussion board, I'm in the student view, so all these look like they're unread posts. There's a, a, a board in here for introduction, and in that board, uh, introductions is, uh, you, know, you can tell people where you work, what your background is, share whatever you're comfortable with sharing. 
I'll have some information about myself that I will send out in an email. Um, how to opt out of the ebook is in here. We'll talk about the ebook in just a moment. And then here is just uh, when I get it up front for everybody. Uh, don't use Chegg.com and those kind of similar services. If you have a question, you need some help, this is a good place to make a post. Help me with problem 2.2-8 or whatever. Either I or another student can help answer that question. Suggestions and corrections. Okay, so this board is um, say um, I made a mistake with a uh, a number in a video. Um, I can't promise that every single video is 100% accurate. I don't think there are more than a half dozen mistakes in the entire class. But if you come across any mistakes, this is a good place to make everybody aware of that. And you can ask questions if you're not sure, and I can make a new video or we can figure something else out so that uh, I've corrected my mistake in the video. Information on the course homework and exams. I'm going to talk about the course homework here in more detail, the required course homework. We do have a required calculator for AEM 250. Uh, the required calculator is a Casio FX260 Solar 2 or the Texas Instruments TI30X2. Now of all the things that uh, I'm not going to get too worked up about for our examination, if you happen to use a different calculator during your test, I won't know that any different because you're going to be proctoring your own test. All right. So if this was a proctored exam, then I would expect all students to have the appropriate calculator. And the reason why we have required these two appropriate calculators is that calculators have gotten such that they have text messaging capabilities now and all kinds of communication functions and uh, storing of PDF documents that kind of stuff is not allowed so don't use any of those functions on any calculators and you'll be okay all right how to opt out of the ebook okay here's another post about how to do that and I'll show you how to opt out in just a moment. Uh, I mentioned course handouts. Here is the place where you can download the course handouts that I have. Common problems and frequently asked questions. I run out of time. How do I know if I should feel confident? I uh, made what I think are little mistakes and I lose a lot of points. Uh, how should I study for exams? All these different things in here are things that uh, students have asked me more than once over the years and this is my response. Okay, So this is a good one to go over. There will be some modifications to this. We're not going to drop any homework this semester because we only have 10 homework assignments that you're going to turn in as opposed to the regular 40. Uh, then here are a series of posts. First of all let's look at this one about the exams. This is what the exams are uh, like in general. Regular exams are going to have three. They're 90 minutes long. A final exam is two and a half hours long. What should I expect to have to know for exam number one? And here is a list of things that you should know for exam number one. Now, probably the, the best way to use this is like a checklist. As you watch the videos that cover exam one content and you understand these different topics, then put a check by it. If you read one of these things and you don't see this topic or you can't remember having watched a video on that topic, go back and look again because everything uh, in this list is something that I would have discussed in our lectures. And the same thing for the exam number two, exam number three, and the final exam. Also important here is what I look for when I grade. Free body diagrams in the AEM 250 mechanics materials are essential. Almost every single problem in this class will require the use of a good free body diagram. A free body diagram is a picture that you draw where the structure is freed from its supports and those supports are replaced with appropriate reactions. 
that's a question that I'm going to ask you in your homework is what is a free body diagram okay so you'll need that you'll need a proper procedure I'm not interested in just you putting a box around a number I want to see how you got to that number that's what I'm evaluating when I evaluate your exams and your homework proper units on your answer if the answer needs to be units of stress and you give me units of force that's a big deal uh, that's completely wrong I'm not going to take all the points off for the problem but out of a hundred points on an exam I will typically devote about 15 uh, points for the entire exam towards units proper amount of significant digits in our class three or four and um, uh, some other things here that, that you can take a look at so these are some important things uh, that you need to keep in mind as you prepare uh, for your exam all right so that's the discussion board let's see what else is next tool accessibility yeah I don't even know what that is now here's the next important thing red shelf and this is where your ebook is going to be and it's called access access granted so let's see what happens when I click on that um, there may or may not be something here because the class hasn't started yet and as a student you will not see this until your class starts okay so let's see this is going to be our book uh, I don't know what this other thing is uh, but this one right here mechanics and materials third edition by Roy Craig is going to be our textbook so um, now I can't click on this right now and open it up because the class hasn't started yet the ebook is um, probably one quarter the price of a hard copy a new hard copy uh, the ebook for our class if you purchase the ebook is a perpetual uh, ebook that means you can keep it forever kind of like the hard copy you don't have to buy the ebook all right let's go back and let's get in the discussion board and let's talk about the ebook and how to opt out of it okay so this is what it'll look like once classes start and you see this kind of gray bar down here I want to opt out of access to all required materials for this course okay you click on that and you will not get charged for the ebook now here's the catch you have to opt out in order to not get charged for the ebook if you do not opt out you will be automatically charged for the ebook and you will automatically have access to the ebook uh, that's a uh, a thing that we had to do in order to get such a good deal on the cost of the ebook is it had to be an opt out type uh, setting on this. Okay. All right, so you'll go into Red Shelf after the class starts. If you look at it before class starts officially on August the 19th, you're not going to see it yet. And uh, after the class starts, then you'll be able to do that. Now, this is a um, uh, this is from a previous semester. Uh, and so this is some of this date some of this data is old this is from a picture from a while back um, but you'll have a couple of weeks in order to opt out now I mentioned um, that the homework was going to be limited and the place that you're going to submit your homework is here so it says intro submit homework here maybe I'll just remove the intro part because I think probably just submit homework here so uh, what you're going to do is you're going to look at this uh, homework that I'm going to download. I don't want to do homework zero right now. Let's look at homework one. Okay, now my web browser automatically saved that file as a PDF. So if you don't see it pop up, look in your downloads for your browser. Okay, let's zoom in on this a little bit. Here's homework one. If you can't print this out, write down the problem statement on a piece of paper, convert it to a PDF for submission. I won't take anything other than a PDF file. If you send me JPEG files from a, a phone or something like that, those files are huge. And they're going to clog up my email. They're going to clog up the system. 
it has to be a PDF and uh, there are different ways that you can make PDFs you can scan in things from uh, a multifunction printer multifunction printers are about a hundred to hundred fifty dollars I highly recommend getting one a laser printer scanner combination uh, is great I have one of my own at home you can also use a different um, software for your cell phone you can take a picture and it can convert that picture into a PDF you guys probably know about all this stuff more than I do but that isn't acceptable that is acceptable to do it that way as well but in the end I need a PDF document and not a JPEG file or other camera file <clears throat> so here's our first homework write a paragraph explaining why Chegg is inappropriate and then here's a couple things uh, refer to the appendix of the book um, look at SI prefixes write down the meaning of a free body diagram and so forth okay so that's uh, what you would do for homework number one now here's how you turn in homework number one you click on this homework number one here's the due date Monday August 24th 2020 10 points are possible and you take your file and you drop it in to this thing right here and then it'll save it into blackboard and then I will grade it or assess it or just keep it on record that you've turned in that homework set okay each of these homework sets have different due dates and you can find the due dates by clicking on that particular spot it may not be intuitively obvious that you have to click on this underlined text uh, but that's what you do in order to be able to submit your homework so throughout the semester I'm gonna have a total of 10 0 through 9 homework assignments that are due as I mentioned previously this is insufficient for you to be able to uh, understand and be successful on your exams the required homework is not enough for you uh, to learn mechanics of materials you're gonna have to do those recommended problems as well but these are the only things that I want you to turn in for this semester if for some reason I change my mind I'll give you plenty of notice about any changes to these assignments now let's take a look at homework zero homework zero is kinda of special <clears throat> basically it's gonna go through and I want you to acknowledge that you have understood the expectations for this course internet delivered I'm gonna hold zoom office hours exams will be in the evening understand that distance uh, education course has the same credit expectations as on-campus courses I've read the policies I know how to view the videos all this good stuff exams will be given during the evening examination times starting at 7 p.m. for 90 minutes and must be returned to me as a legible PDF file okay so what does that mean again at 6:59 p.m. US Central Time on September the 16th I'm gonna email your exam to you you're gonna work your exam on a piece of paper you're gonna send me back by email not through blackboard but by email you're gonna send me back the exam within the examination period plus maybe 10 or 15 minutes for you to scan the exam you're gonna do that on 10 9 16 you can do that on 10 14 you can do that on 11 18 <clears throat> typically for distance education classes in the past I have been very flexible and given a week-long examination period that's when we had proctors and proctors would take the exams and things uh, my experience has been there's been there's been too much of students uh, sharing exams that they've taken over the course of the week and different weird things like that so these are going to be the exam dates now I'm not a monster if you tell me I'm traveling for work on September the 16th and I can't take that exam at that time send me any you know send me an email that states that give me a good legitimate reason why I need to come up with a makeup exam and we will work to schedule a makeup test for that particular exam.
got to be very soon. We can't pile these things up, and they should be within a few days of when that uh, exam date is scheduled. Okay, now I want to minimize this. So we may have four students that want to take a makeup exam. I'm going to find a time where all four students can take that exam and uh, get it back to me under the same conditions. All right, likewise for the other exams and the final exam as well. Now the final exam we're going to do uh, on uh, December the 9th from 7 to 9.30 p.m. U.S. Central Time. Exams will be worked independently by the student of this course and not with any use of course notes, course materials, course book, tutors, websites, any other external help. It's only you and the test sending me the results at the end of the test. I understand that all non-textbook class materials, exams, handouts, and videos is copyright of me and uh, not to be stored, distributed, or transmitted except uh, as needed for the semester to support, uh, submit course materials for grading purposes. And then I want you to sign it and date it. I don't want you to just use a um, uh, a picture. I, I, I don't want you to just use text uh, on this PDF document. I want you to actually sign it. And I want you to go through the process of scanning this homework and turning it in. All right, now the due date of this is very soon. What's going on here? Oh, let's log me out. I've been talking too long. Let's see if I can get back in here. Now the due date is this is very soon. Classes start on Wednesday, and this is due on Friday, August 21st. Okay, so I do want to know that everybody in class has an understanding about that. All right, now let's look at these, uh, we're almost done, let's look at these lecture learning modules. So we have an introduction module, let's see, let's make sure everything's right. We have a module one, okay, we have a module one right here. Uh, doesn't seem to be anything in the introduction module. Maybe I can fix that or we can see what's going on with that. Um, module 1, you can get in here and uh, here is the lecture videos for each of these lectures. So you do not have to go, uh, let's see, I need to get into the student view so that you can see what that's like. So you don't have to go into that folder you can go into uh, module one to access the videos for the lectures. Now in addition to the videos for the lectures there's some additional videos that I have recorded. So here's when I talk about a round tensile specimen. Here's when I talk about a rubber band being stretched. I show a video of that. So these are little things that I put together that would be similar to what I would take in some kind of prop as I go into the class. Now in addition to these videos I have PDFs of all of my lecture notes for each of these lectures. So if you don't want to take notes or if you want to print these notes out and take notes over the top of my notes then this might be something of use to you. So for example uh, here are the notes from the first lecture and so forth and so on. Okay, so uh, module one are lectures one through eight, and then um, review the proctoring information procedure. Okay, no proctors. Okay, you're taking it on your own. After module one, you will take test number one. So by this date, we'll be pretty close to here. Now, uh, module 1 materials ends after lecture 8 which is on 9-4 but your examination is not until 9-16. Okay, that buys you a little bit of time in between here and the, the exam in order to get ready for that particular test. I will caution you that exam 2 doesn't have a very big gap so we end our material on 10-12 and our exam is on 10-14.
you do have the advantage of having all the lecture material and everything available to you ahead of time so I don't think that's going to cause any particular problems. Exam 2 is over a couple different modules um, and all these pictures that you see here are pictures that I've taken this is a bar that was fired out of a gun tube and had a steel target and is deformed so we're talking about axial deformation in this section it goes through you watch these lectures and so forth and uh, so on throughout the course now if we go to our course schedule down at the bottom it tells you exactly what chapters are covered under each um, exam chapters 1 and 2, 3 through 6, 7 through 9 and when we get to the final exam the final exam is comprehensive although it's mainly geared towards the last part of the course and it will also pick up some of these topics that are not on exam number three okay so exam number three covers combined loading more circle and beam deflection column buckling stress concentrations failure criteria could show up on your final exam in addition to other material that we've had throughout the semester All right, so um, I think that gives a pretty thorough overview about the expectations for the course and how this is going to be conducted. I will be sending you this assignment sheet by email and I will figure out a time that I can set some Zoom, regular Zoom office hours. That said, please use our discussion board. Uh, please send me an email if you do have any additional questions. All right, um, look forward to reading the introductions and the discussion board, and uh, we'll see you soon.